beep, beep. What is up guys? My name is Sam World and I make dance music production tutorials here on YouTube. Now a question I got asked recently was, yo Sen, how can we get those hard hitting drums like Pausa and Michael Bibi? Now I know a lot of producers like to invoke emotion in their music, so if you're thinking about the childhood years, then I guess this is a good way to kind of put that kind of emotion in there, a little bit of PTSD for all of us. Now guys, if you want to support the channel, you can head over to evilsounds.com. I did release a Diva Tech House sound set. Check it out. If it's a good fit and you want to support the channel, best way to do it. With that being said, let's get into some of the techniques that we're going to be using in order to make our drums hit harder than usual so that you can get those hard smacking hitting drums. So the first thing I think we have to talk about is sound selection. And in all honesty, I think sound selection is probably going to be about 80, 90% of the battle in trying to achieve a hard hitting mix. From there, if you don't mess it up with like dumb compression where you're like have a very like fast attack and you're clamping down on transients then you should be fine but when you're creating a track let's say a tech house track the first thing i noticed with a lot of the michael bb tracks and pausa tracks where a lot of you guys say they smack um is the fact that they're using 909 bass kicks which is a little different from if you were to make mark knight kind of stuff dirty bird kind of stuff to what they're doing so i think the best example to kind of give about this is going to be to compare an 808 kick with a 909 kick if you wanted to get something punchy would you go that or what you go for okay now the difference here between the 808 and 909 is obviously the 909 has a stronger pitch envelope going higher up giving a dump around the 60 hertz and up range while the 808 is a little more more mellowed out and there's a place for the 808 kick of course you know it doesn't mean it's bad or anything but if you're trying to achieve those kind of drums you want to go with 909 bass variant kind of kick drums so for this uh, little drum loop that we have here we are going to be going with uh this kind of Okay, and then from there, uh, that's how we get started. Um, the next thing is that when you're looking for samples, a lot of the times more sustain on a sample means less punch just because it's going to be plus instead of pa. Uh, so that's another thing to look at. For example, here I have this, which is a very smacky clap, very short. However, if I change this clap to more of a, let's say like this, where it's a little longer, we do lose a little bit of the punch compared to uh, that, but in return you get a clap that's a little bit more sustained out and there's a place again for it as well. Same thing goes with open hats and same thing goes with your closed hats, okay? So sound selection is very important. What I advise is if you wanna make, let's say like very punchy stuff, smacking, uh, go for uh, drums that are a little bit more shorter uh, and, but have a lot more smack. Now, once you have the right sounds, let's assume that you want to make something smack harder Then this is the fun part. For instance, here I have this open hat. Okay, so one of the things and tools that we're going to have access to is dynamic, dynamic shaping. So for this, you can either use a compressor or um, a transient designer. And for this part of the video, we'll use a transient designer on the hat. It's probably my favorite way to get something to sound fat. Here I have a couple from the Kilohertz Transient Shaper to the Plugin Alliance SPL Transient Designer Plus. And of course, we're going to have the Native Instruments Transient Master, which I personally like for using on Tech House open hats. From here, we're going to have this open hat. Now, if we talked about it again, if there's more sustain, then less chance of it sounding smacky. So from there, we're going to lower this down a bit. And then from there, we can add a bit of attack. And you can tell the difference. Now, let's A and B it while we're playing this little track. Okay, so transient designers are really good for achieving this sort of sound. Um, the other way to use it as well is on the kick. So for this one, I decided to use it on this kick, which is just a little too rounded in my opinion. So what I've decided to do is apply a bit of an SPL on it where I'm lowering the sustain. So here I'm using a different plugin. It looks a little cooler, a little intimidating, but it's still the same. We have our sustain, we have our attack, but this one does have a parallel mix if you want to do a parallel I guess you could say compression or transient designing, which I always felt like there was a bit of compression being used in these, but again, that's for another day. So from here again, we're just gonna kind of zero this out, let the sustain. 
And again, I kind of want to shorten it a bit or at least get the sustain to be a little quieter. So what we're doing here, again, to me, I call it dynamic shaping. And what that means is that what's essentially happening is just we're getting something that looks more like this. And, you know, it'll be cool if we kind of nail this real quick. And then from there, like kind of bounce it down just to see what it's doing to it. So you can see kind of like the sustain is down and then I'm assuming the transient went up or else I'm really not doing anything to it to be honest. <laughs> no, but we can hear it and that's the important thing. It's not Fugazi or it's not fake. We can definitely hear it. So from there, let's just kind of nail it a little better. Less, it doesn't really need it. This kick drum's already pretty awesome to begin with. From here, let's just make sure we're not pushing it too much. Okay, so those are transient designers. And again, you can use them on really anything. But for me, when I'm producing something, like I like to kind of mix it up just to see what comes out of it. Now, the next way we can also add a bit of a smack to our drums is by utilizing compression. Now, there's multiple reasons why you would want to compress. And, and in all honesty, guys, to this day, sometimes I even question what I'm doing with the compressor in terms of, like, is it needed for what I'm trying to do? So that's why it's always good to have a reference track so that you're not going too overboard with the smacking. Uh, but one of the ways that we can apply smack to a drum sample uh, with compression is to utilize a compression with a high attack or low attack, I guess, to allow the transient through. And then from there, you can mess with the knee of it and the ratio. Okay, so for instance, here we have a clap, and this clap is going to sound like this. And we can kind of clamp down on it to make it a little bit more snappier by utilizing compression. And in this point, again, we're, we are dynamically shaping the clap. So essentially what we're doing is we're allowing the transient, this initial part of the clap, to stay at its relative volume but everything behind it what again what i'm doing with the attack is anything behind i want the attack clamps down is getting reduced in volume so it's a way of using compression to dynamically shape it so from here we can run a high attack high ratio and then from there we have a knee the higher the knee the more gradual the compression is applied while 0, 0.0 cldb knee is just gonna moment that the threshold is hit bam we get the compression instantly. So this is slamming the drums very hard with a, I guess, I think it's the right way to say a hard knee. Um. Here's how we're doing it. Notice how it's similar to utilizing the transient designer where we're lowering sustain and increasing the attack on it. Again, don't get too overboard with it, but we'll leave it like that and see how it sounds. So with sound selection and all the individual stuff out of the way, we can get into essentially where I feel like uh, majority of the slap is going to occur, and that is going to be on the drum bus. So if you're already not grouping your drums up and putting them into a drum bus, then what are you doing? So in the drum bus, what we're essentially going to do is, and you can never go wrong with doing these things, is uh, compression, saturation, EQ, and limiting if your heart desires, okay? So the first thing we're going to do here in this... Uh, in this channel or in this bus is utilize a, a more of a glue compressor similar to the glue from Ableton. I personally like to use again fancy plugins just because I do feel like they sound a little better or they have their own message, their own sound. Uh, so here I'm using the BX Townhouse bus compressor. Got this on sale at Plugin Lines for 50. You know damn well sure I'm paying 200 for it. So again, pretty pretty standard. Now usually with the bus compression, what you want to do is you uh, you want to kind of glue the drums together, but at the same time you don't want to slam your drums and like literally uh, make them lifeless. And this is where a lot of people make mistakes in my opinion because you'll see people doing like this. Sh And 
and it kind of kills the punch in my opinion essentially you're clamping down on the kick and driving the compressor with the kick now i might be wrong maybe there's some old school techniques where people do that in order to get i don't know saturation or, or get some juice out of the compressor but um i feel like again there's better ways to do it for me just because i grew up in the digital realm and not in the analog world with old school or i've never learned how to use analog consoles in real life so but what works for me again is just utilizing it so we're gonna reset this and utilize it again uh so we'll use the townhouse sounds like a suburban ass compressor uh bus compressor and then from there Again, we're just trying to kind of dial in. Now, usually I'll put it on auto when I don't know where to put the release, but usually a lower release is what you want if you want your drums to smack in a higher attack. Now, usually what you can hear, what happens when bus compression, most of the time you'll hear the kick sort of get mixed into the drums and then you get everything else to kind of pop out more. You can hear more on the open hat, the closed hats, has, uh, how they come out in the mix a little more. with the The clap also pops out a lot more. So again, it's really cool to kind of use. Some of them will have um, it's like filters so that maybe the drum doesn't drive it too much. So from here, we can actually saturate. And from here, experiment if you want to put the saturator in front of the compressor or behind. You know, there's kind of like theory behind it. But in all honesty, for me, I usually just kind of go where it sounds better. Uh, from here, we're not going to really push the saturator much just because a lot of the drums that we're using have been saturated already. And I know this because I made them. So again, depending on the sample pack companies you guys are utilizing, uh, you really want to be aware on how much you're pushing uh, the drums and whatnot. I think it's fair to say the moment that your ears can't handle it loud and sh like it's too much. But again, just make sure. Some people like to use samples that aren't as processed so they can sa uh, process them themselves and get their own little unique style. Well, some people like to use processed samples as it is. Uh, for this, we're just going to kind of go between the different forms and pick the one that sounds best. Again, we want to look at our volume as we do this, just so that loudness is not playing a factor in this. So we can kind of see how the clap is actually getting slammed in uh, with the saturation, just so that it doesn't go too overboard. So it gives a kind of a glue effect. I think I'm liking E more. It has more of a nice kind of ring to the high end. The, the high end doesn't get numbed a bit. And from there, uh, we're just going to put an EQ. So I'm going to put the saturation behind, and now we're going to have... So here I brought up a single span just to see where everything is sort of uh, landing in terms of frequency. So I'm pretty much liking what I'm seeing. Usually what you'll see in a lot of Tech House tracks is the fact that your highs are almost as equal to the low end. Um, some that are warmer won't have this effect, but a lot of the ones that you see with like really nice top end will have this. You just got to be careful to make sure it's not leads and stuff. But I really like what I'm seeing there, so I'm happy with that. From here, um, I don't think this is going to be needed, but I'll show it to you guys anyways. Another trick in order to get your drums to smack is to utilize upwards... Um, expansion i guess it's a form of compression that's pushing up rather than down so instead of losing volume you're gaining so it's very similar to the dynamic eq and pro q3 except with pro mb we have a little bit more control on it so for instance here i'm gonna set it up again just so that you guys can hear it and see how it works so what i'll do is open up pro mb and we're gonna put it in front of this compressor just to kind of gain back some dynamics on the clap and we can focus in on the clap because the clap will usually land in the mid-range around here
Okay, so from here, let's assume that you have this and you're like, you know what? The clap's not really popping out, which it is, but let's assume you're like, no, it's not. Then what we can do is we can set this into expand mode and then we're going to change the range up. And what you're going to notice every time the clap hits, it's going to trigger it. And from there, you, if you want to get crazy, you can put it up and give it a high attack. So that way, the initial part of the clap comes through and then it gets slammed. So from there, hello, knee. From there, I'm giving a super low knee. Again, hard as shit. Um, and this is just going to make it so that it smacks. But again, thread carefully with this stuff. I, I wouldn't even know if I would want to use it like that. So again, if you like that, cool. But again, the MB, like all of these tools here, you don't have to use them together. Like if you're watching this video, I hope that you're kind of going like, oh, I like that. I like this. And cherry pick on the techniques that you want to utilize. Um, but again, don't go crazy with all of them. I'm not going to use it. I think this sounds great as it is already without it. Now, the last thing I'll say, guys, is I do have a master and I am using a compressor on the master. Now, again, don't be intimidated by the Shadow Hills one. It's actually pretty simple to use. But the last thing I'll say is it doesn't matter if you do all of this. Is if in the master, you're just going to slam your fucking transients. So when you are compressing in the master, again, think about your transients, your kick, etc. cetera. Um, and try and utilize higher attacks like 10, 30, maybe 3 or 5, and that's max. Don't try and go slamming down on it. Unless you're trying to catch peaks and that's about it. You don't want to be catching like a kick and just slamming it in because you're going to kill all the work that you've done. Uh, so again, that's why I say a lot of the times keep it simple because I feel like we are our own worst enemy and we shoot ourselves in the foot right before we get to the damn finish line. Okay. So again, here I'm just running uh, this compressor. If you can tell, the kick is just sounding way better with it, giving a bit of color. And again, just utilizing a discrete attack of 10. It's just a fancy way of saying the attack, by the way. Recover. Uh, this has two forms of compression. We have an optical, which is going to be based more on algorithm, while here we have a little bit more control. So we do have two stages, left being optical, the right being our discrete. And this is what I mean. If you lower your attack like this, you kill all the punch that you had. So again, do it tastefully. We'll do 10 and then maybe a little bit of recovery. Just accentuate the drum. But other than that, guys, those are all the things I know when it comes to making your drums just smack harder, making them sound like they're actually hitting, as you can tell. I think the last thing I'll say is that usually more minimal style tracks will allow your drums to hit. If you have like super saws going and doing all this crazy shit, then it gets a lot harder to get your drums to stay this fucking like smacky without um, making the mix sound like shit. So the more stuff you have, the less chance your drums will smack. Just look at uplifting trance. Those drums don't smack for shit. So that's why, again, keep it simple, very minimalistic. For this, I just have, um, again, a preset from the new Diva pack, which is called um, Dumper Tom. And I am uh, saturating it with Decapitator, but it sounds like this. If you like the sound of that, check it out. I put a lot of hard work into the patches. I make them... Pretty much, I like to say, I make them ready to be used to the point where you really like, I just make your life a lot easier when it comes in the mixing stages, making the, the basses sound proper. Other than that, guys, you guys take care. If you guys have any other forms to make your drum smack, leave it down in the comments. I love to hear what you've come up with. But other than that, you guys have a good night, and I'll catch you guys next time for another video. Peace out, take care, and much love.